Welcome to Perspectives Online and, of course, on air from WFSU Public Media. I'm Tom Flanagan. This program, using the ubiquitous Zoom platform, was pre-recorded on Tuesday, September 22nd for playback on Thursday, September 24th, and the show will appear on both WFSU FM and the WFSU Public Media Facebook page. Now, this program is the, the second in our series of political perspectives in the run-up to the November 3rd general election. We'll be talking with candidates vying for several offices in the course of the next week and a half. Uh, that includes uh, two Leon County Commission contests, one Tallahassee City Commission race, and also a local referendum on a proposed Children's Council for Leon County. And I bet you we're going to wade into that particular topic in the course of this particular program, too. Today's Political Perspectives features the three candidates for the Leon County Board of County Commissioners at large, seat one. Now, this seat opened up when the current occupant, Mary Ann Lindley, decided not to seek another term. And out of a very large initial field, and I mean a total field because we had the screen covered with candidates at that point, going into the August primary, we are now down to the two largest vote getters in that election, Carolyn Cummings and Kelly Audi, plus a write-in candidate, Melissa Villar. And we're going to start off with giving each candidate a few moments, <coughs> excuse me, to introduce themselves. They're also going to talk about their background and will be telling us what they consider to be the unique qualities that make each of them the preferred person to do the job. After that, we'll get into some specific issues pertinent to Leon County government. And although we don't follow the strict time limits on statements, as so many of these forums and debates do, um, I'll kind of jump in if any response goes on for more than, say, a couple, three minutes. So we can talk about more topics in the course of the program. So please, uh, we'll ask the folks to keep their comments brief and on point, And that includes me. In advance of the program, we did hold a drawing just to see who start off. And then we'll mix it up as we go. The name that came up first was uh, Carolyn Cummings. So Ms. Cummings, welcome yes. back. It is so good to see you. And if you could give us again a little introduction about yourself and what you consider the top qualities that would uh, qualify you for the office of Leon County Commission. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. And I appreciate WFSU and you all allow me the opportunity to speak about my candidacy. I am Carolyn Cummings, as you said, I'm a candidate for Leon County Commission at large, uh, seat three. I have been a resident and a practicing attorney in Leon County for over 37 years. I've worked in the public sector, I've worked in the private sector. I purchased property as part of the French town revitalization uh, movement, and my law firm is located here in Frenchtown. It has been here for about 20, over 20 years. I believe I have my, my ears to the pulse of the individuals in Leon County. I have volunteered my legal services to many segments of the community uh, and organizations that advocate for youth and for seniors and just for all citizens uh, in the county. I have been recognized by the Florida Supreme Court for all of the free legal services that I have provided over the years to citizens in Leon County. I believe that I am the best person for the job because I know how to think outside of the box. I am a business owner. I know what it is to make payroll. I am a mother. I represent clients who, for the most part, don't have a lot of money. They're not wealthy, but I've had to find ways to advocate for them successfully. I will take that same advocacy to the Leon County Commission and advocate for all citizens of Leon County. I am concerned about jumpstarting our economy. I'm concerned about affordable housing, affordable health care, equitable rate wages, and also lowering the crime rate and social justice and equality. Affordable housing, health care, equitable wages is what we want to do to make Leon County a viable place to live for everybody. Uh, addressing the crime rate is about 
making sure we are maintaining law and order in our county and in our streets. And of course, addressing social justice or criminal justice reform is just simply about fairness for everybody. And especially uh, since we've had a study here in Leon County where most of the citizens, majority of the citizens believe we need to look at equity and we need to look at the inequities and we need to be concerned about equal justice for all. So I believe this is the time and place where we need to tackle those issues. I am the individual that we need at the table to make sure our economy is jump started in the face of COVID-19. And I believe we have to marriage business and industry and make sure that the concerns of the community as far as the, envir the environment, our natural resources are holistically addressed. We can all work together to make sure we jumpstart the economy and I'm the person to be at the table to do that, Mr. Flanagan. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Carolyn Cummings. Next, uh, we uh, have a self-introduction and qualifications overview from Kalayati. Go ahead, ma'am. Oh, better take off mute there, Kelly. Of course it was going to be me. Thank you so much for having us on uh, the show, Tom. It's really a pleasure to be here. I'm running for the Leon County Commission at large seat one position because I love Leon County. I've been incredibly lucky to have uh, raised two children in this beautiful community. And I saw all of the possibilities that were available to them. I've also spent the last 25 years working in the community in the nonprofit sector predominantly. And I've experienced the fact that that is not the same circumstances for a lot of people in this community. The people that I've been working with for the last 25 years are people who are scared every single day, whether or not they're gonna have a safe place to sleep tonight, and also whether or not they're gonna have food for their children. And so I'm running for them. I'm running because my father couldn't access affordable quality care here in Leon County when he got sick three years ago, and he died while we were trying to find um, an economical assisted living facility for him. So I'm running for people like my father who cannot afford to access um, affordable assisted living. I'm running because the, I know that the people of Leon County have the solutions to these problems and many other problems. The thing that I believe that I am good at and that I've been doing for 25 years here is pulling people together to work collaboratively and in, to look at big issues and try to come up with big solutions. And so some of the things I've been able to accomplish working in groups and leading groups to get that done are things like creating the first forensic sexual assault nurse examiner program here in Leon County. I expanded the domestic violence center here from a three bedroom house to an 11,000 square foot facility and was able to add a child care, quality child care center to that. I worked with then Commissioner Keenock and Yemi to create the Commission on the Status of Women and Girls. I also participated in starting the United Partners for Human Services, which was the very first um, association for human service organizations in the community and was part of starting the Institute on Nonprofit Innovation and Excellence, which is the very first um, management support organization for the nonprofit sector. I have 25 years of working directly with the people in this county from every walk of life, either collaboratively because we've been doing the work that needed to get done or working in neighborhoods to find out what they needed and how we could help do it. In addition to my nonprofit experience, I worked in commercial real estate. I've worked with the Bureau of Land Management, which is the federal government. And I've also worked for Chris Craft Boats, which is an international a manufacturing company. I think even people who have butted heads with me will tell you that the thing about me is that I am not afraid to speak the truth and I'm not afraid to ask hard questions. And I'd like to do that as your next Leon County Commissioner. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kelly Adi. Now, Carolyn and Kelly have both been on this program 
in the pre-primary political perspectives. Uh, we welcome a new face and voice to the discussion, though, because she is the write-in candidate for this particular office in the Leon County Commission, and that is Melissa Villar. And Melissa, go ahead, tell us a bit about yourself by way of background and also what you consider to be some of your prime qualifications for the job. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you, WFSU Public Media, Tom and Kimberly for holding the forum today. Um, first, I do want to give my condolences to our families that have lost lives um, due to COVID public health disaster and to, to violence, to crime um, in Leon County and the United States um, and the globe. Um, you know, I, am, I, I wanna give my sincere condolences to all the families that have lost lives, uh, first and foremost. Um, and I do also, um, so my background, um, I am originally from Texas and I moved to Tallahassee in 2000, early 2000s. Um, and I worked for a, a Fortune 500 telecommunications firm, which enabled me with a livable wage to relocate my family to Tallahassee and, um, because I have family here and, um, I, um, while working full time, you know, I, I, I was an independent distributor for Scholastic, um, contracting, um, you know, having book um, sales with child development centers, with Department of Juvenile Justice, um, and to, you know, our various child care centers in the region and uh, the Panhandle in, in South Georgia. Um, so I am I'm familiar with communities, I am familiar with the people. Um, and, and, you know, because I, and I also worked for the Leon County school system um, at Gretchen Everhart with um, special needs children. And, um, you know, because of the, the inability to um, provide for my children with one stable job and, and um, health insurance, I began working for the Florida House of Representatives um, in, in a few years after I moved here. And so, with that, I earned um, working full time, being a full time mother, um, obviously, uh, raising children. Um, so my kudos to families that are doing virtual school because I would come home and, um, you know, studying. I went back to I went back to higher education, um, earned my bachelor um, from Embry Riddle in aeronautics and, and security and intelligence, and my master of public administration from the Askew School of Public Administration and Policy, and, and also focused on emergency management. Um, so in 2015, I resigned from the Florida House of Representatives because of my, um, of my, of my values of what I represented. And as Ruth Gator, uh, Bader Ginsburg, you know, leadership, if you, if you others will join. Um, so that, that is what I did. I resigned and I formed the, um, because I felt that communities were being underrepresented. So I formed, um, the holistic cannabis community in normal Tallahassee. And my philosophy is equal access, equal justice. So in four short years, um, because of our perseverance, um, because of the inequities that exist in Florida um, based on medical marijuana um, and the inequities in cannabis um, and the pay to play scheme, if you, if you could not afford the, we are the top three most expensive um, patient to patient access medical marijuana one of three most expensive for patient and business entrance um so if you could not afford to be a patient then if you were arrested um if you didn't have a, a medical marijuana id card then you would be subject to arrest and i, I had um you know young individual in, you know driving and being followed and being um, stopped in their own driveway with one marijuana joint for their mother because they had cancer so these are the types of issues that i fight for I fight for equity, I fight for uh, our hemp programs. So in four short years, we were able to um, lower crime in the state of, uh, in Leon County by 32%. That was through our perseverance, through our evidence-based, evidence everything I do is evidence-based. Um, and so with, by our perseverance, we were able to halt the, the arrest and prosecutions for cannabis possession. We were able to bring equity to the cannabis industry by, by having a free hemp cultivation permit fee. So I do represent the 75% of Leon County voters who voted in favor of medical marijuana. And it doesn't represent the number of patients that we have in Leon County. And 72% of Floridians voted in favor of medical marijuana. Um, so right now, um, you know, 
I, I do represent the people, not, um, you know, unfortunately, there are organizations that are, are, are collaborated with in Leon County that are against our voters. And, and it's important to understand that. And that is what I bring to the table. I, I speak the truth when we're at forums for medical marijuana. It's like, okay, I understand that, you know, educational institutions are concerned for their students and for, but they need to know the truth. They need to understand what the subject matters are. And hemp is no longer a controlled substance. The Moore Act would deschedule marijuana, which was up for a vote. Um, we should have a vote coming up um, this month or in the next few months, which would deschedule marijuana, which also, you know, I have my neighbor is a firefighter in, in EMS technicians. And, you know, we are really, it would expand, it would end the strategy to, to, to buy because what we have is a 1970s Controlled Substances Act, which was, which the, you know, the Schaefer Commission recommended against um, scheduling marijuana. And the Nixon administration, Richard Nixon, who was the only president to resign, um, was against that. And the strategy, the Southern strategy to divide our nation prevailed. And it, it, it does today. So by a president that resigned. So these are, these are the issues that I, I focus on. And it's not only that, but it's the environmental issues. It's our emergency management issues. It's our affordable housing because we do have affiliates that are working on tiny hemp house houses in Panama City. Um, we focus on earn to learn programs with our community carpentry USA. Um, so there are, are many, many aspects. I'm, I'm quite diverse um, and I'm focused on inclusion. So thank you. Very good. We'll get into some more of those in just a little bit. But one thing that I think everyone had mentioned in the course of these introductory comments was, or at least had, had referenced it, was the ongoing income disparity and the stratification economically within this community, which so many uh, news sources and public policy experts have referenced just in the past five years, something that seems to now be increasing in the wake of the COVID crisis, which has caused uh, an increase in unemployment and a further gap between the haves and the have-nots in the community. So again, very, very quickly, folks, if we could get a couple minutes from each of you on what you would do specifically, especially in the realm of jobs, which would uh, reduce such things as youthful crime, um, other problems within the community. Let's focus on that and we'll kind of reverse the order here. Uh, starting with you, Ms. Villar, what would you do about jobs, particularly in the parts of the community and in uh, communities of color where those jobs are really hard to find right now? Absolutely. Um, you know, it is about opportunity. Um, one of the things that our team also is focused on is um, you know, working with the Leon County Schools to um, actually have um, trade, um, you know, shop programs available again in, in high schools. Um, you know, that is something, and with the Earn to Learn programs, because, you know, with the nonprofits, we need to be able to have a revenue stream for our, our young people, which is not fixed on the illicit market. Um, you know, there is a huge wealth disparity problem. There is a huge human trafficking escort issue in this town, which is, is unfortunately um, used by our, our elected officials that come to Tallahassee at the Capitol. So unfortunately, this is happening in our town and I have um, provided much information um, and to, to combat against the abuses that are, are using our ex sexual exploitation of our youth. So the huge wealth disparities in our, in our town um, impact, negatively impact um, the, the option. So we need, to have, we need to have shop programs, we need to have earn to learn programs. Um, and it's important to understand, you know, you've got, you have um, the Florida Chamber of Commerce, which is opposed, has um, the Supreme Court briefs. They are, they are opposed to the legalization of marijuana. Um, you know, there are trade federations who are 
Um, and you can look at the amicus brief, you can look at the briefs um, through the Florida Supreme Court, make it legal Florida and regulate marijuana like alcohol, sensible Florida, um, which they are opposed. And these are, so they are opposed to the majority of our voters. Um, so when we are collaborating and discussing about business opportunities, um, and I don't believe when you have, um, I don't believe the chamber, and that's why we have so many different sections and so many different factions, and, and because they, they did not represent the majority of, of um, the community, or it left out, it, did, it was not diversified. So that's why you have so many various offshoots now. Um, so it's, it's really important. Um, and education, you know, hemp professional and technical resource centers, we need technical resource centers because it's not about, you know, I have formed these organizations and we are, have been 100% um, volunteer based. So, you know, to be able to offer um, a, an opportunity, which is, is it's, these are the beginnings. These, this is just the beginning. And I feel like I am the, the person to lead in the 21st century, to lead Leon County in the first in 21st century that is also concerned about our natural resources. So when we are, you know, development, and everything that we're doing for job creation has to be sustainable, environmentally friendly, um, and, you know, for, for our future generations. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Kelly Yachty, your thoughts again on income disparity, job creation, economic development, those things. So um, I really believe the way that we're going to address poverty is really through collective impact. One of the things that's pretty apparent to me is that the way we're approaching poverty is what I, through what I call popcorn policy. It means that uh, something pops up over here and it's a good idea and we and we're trying to do it, or it pops up over there and we try to do it. What we do not have is a, pl a blueprint for economic segregation. And what I'd like to see is a strategic plan on how over the next 20 years, we could make a meaningful difference um, with the almost 50% of Leon County residents who can't afford to live in this community. And so um, there are a couple of different ways that I'd like to see us talking about that. One is that we really have, we're focused on bringing in jobs to the community, but we have to be careful about that. We have to bring in jobs that play, pay a living wage so that we can actually afford to pay people a wage that will bring them out of poverty and allow them to support their families. Um, I believe that we need to increase the minimum pay uh, across the board to $15 an hour. I'm supportive of the way they're graduating it in through the constitutional amendment. Uh, I do recognize that it's gonna be a hard lift for some businesses. I did it in the last organization that I worked for and it definitely impacts your bottom line, but it's necessary because otherwise, I, I'm not sure that businesses understand that when you're underpaying people, you're helping with your bottom line, but you're forcing people to live in circumstances where they can't afford to feed their families in an appropriate way. And I, I don't believe people really want to do that. Um, I think we need to support more black and women owned startup businesses. I'd like to see a lot of emphasis on growing talent here. I understand that there are specific areas of expertise where we need to go outside of the county and recruit people or to try to keep them so they don't leave our universities. I 100% understand that. But I also think we need to spend a lot of time and attention on actually growing um, local citizens into um, opening the kind of businesses that we need in the community. I really want to see the county contracting with locally owned businesses for everything unless there's an extraordinary reason that they can, meaning that it is just a service that there is nobody in Leon County that can provide. One of the examples somebody gave me was there are development, um, there's development opportunities that the companies here are not big enough to be able to handle, then I think we had to grow them into being able to handle it so that locally owned uh, businesses are actually doing our locally owned work and that the money is staying here. My values in looking at economic segregation are I grew up poor. I was, uh, my dad was a self-employed plumber. My mother was a stay-at-home mom until I was in uh, middle school. Uh, for a period when I was uh, in middle school, we were homeless and lived in, actually lived in a field with a converted mobile home RV for a summer. So 
I know that that didn't have any impact on how I was loved. It had no impact on uh, whether or not I had food and whether I was well taken care of. So I think the other thing we need to do is educate the part of the community that is the haves, that the have nots are hurting and that they're not okay with their situation. And so we have to do something to help them help their families. Thank you. Thank you very much. Carolyn Cummings, we'll wind up with you there. What would you do to address some of those issues where there are folks who have a lot and some folks who don't have much and a big gap in between? Uh, thank you, Mr. Flanagan. I think clearly there is income disparity here in Leon County. And I think perhaps we might need to take a two-pronged approach to that. We have businesses that are established here. We have women and minority owned businesses and then we have majority owned businesses as well and it's interesting that i took part in a forum this weekend that was um put on by two chambers the uh, big Ben minority chamber and the capital city chamber there people were in attendance and we talked about this very issue and the first thing I believe that we need to do to jumpstart the economy and try to deal with that income divide is bring the industries together, bring the businesses together. And as a Leon County or city government, we can incentivize our major businesses to increase include small and minority businesses in their proposals, in their uh, response to requests for proposals. We have to provi provide a reason to include small and minority owned businesses in the procurement process. Um, one of the things that the forum this weekend also did is they brought the chief um, procurement officer from Atlanta to speak to the group. And he talked about how the development of, we know that major airport, the busiest airport in the world in Atlanta, how the procurement process was able to uh, invest and was, and as a result, created millionaires in Atlanta who were minority owned, women owned businesses. So I think it's going to take us incentivizing uh, the inclusion of all businesses, especially for work that is bid by our government, by our city and our county. And then we have to follow that and make sure that that process works. We have to make sure that the majority and, and the minority um, developers are working together to, to make it happen. And that, that's the first step. And I think that's something that we can do immediately. And, and that would help jumpstart the economy. But second, I believe we need to educate our citizenry. We need to educate uh, our, our workforce. Uh, everybody is not designed, uh, nor does everybody want to attend college, but there is something for everybody to do everybody can contribute to the society and that that's what makes communities and cities rich uh it's interesting that i was talking to mr rudy Rowe, who is the owner of row uh, roofing the other day and he has some great ideas and i think what we have to do as the government is bring all parties together we have business owners that have great ideas about how to jump start this economy and one of the things we talked about was education, uh, strengthening the voca vocational technical schools that we have here locally, or, or maybe even creating vocational technical colleges that will attract individuals from all over the southern, the southern part of Alabama, Georgia, and here uh, in Florida, and educate our people to these various professions so that they can make livable wage, take care of their families, they can have affordable health care, they can purchase housing, and all of that collectively will bolster the economy, will increase the tax rate, the tax base, 
and it will make our county a better place to live. So I think we have that two approach, two prong approach to addressing that problem. Thank you, Carolyn Cummings. The three candidates for Leon County Board of County Commissioners, the at-large seat being vacated by Mary Ann Lindley, who decided not to seek another term. We have Carolyn Cummings, Kelly Otte, and Melissa Villar here with us on Political Perspectives from WFSU Public Media. Some dates to keep in mind for the upcoming general election in Leon County. Vote by mail ballots being shipped out by uh, Mark Early. I think he's going to carry them all in the, the, the back of his SUV to the uh, post office himself. That's what I heard. Coming out uh, September 24th, the mailings begin there to the voters who have requested mail-in ballots. The deadline for voter registration, October 5th, early voting starting on October 19th. Early voting locations, of course, posted on the Supervisor of Elections website. And then the general election day is Tuesday, November 3rd. Not only will you folks be uh, facing balloting on that day, but there is also a referendum here in Leon County for the Children's Council. And if we can go around the, uh, the screen real quick and find out from each of you whether you support the council or not, why and why not? Kelly, Adi, let's start with you on that. What do you think of the Children's Council? I absolutely do support it. I was part of the group in 2007 that tried to get it going uh, way back when, and we just didn't have the ability to move it as a nonprofit sector. I was really uh, pleased that this time it started as a grassroots movement um, and that it started from the business community, which I think is incredible. Uh, we absolutely have to have it because what we're talking about are children living in poverty a mile from where the Leon County Commission meets and a mile from the capital of one of the largest states in the nation where children are often piled 10 and 11 into two bedroom houses while their parents are trying to figure out how to support them. The only way that we're, a, it's all attached. The poverty is attached, crime rate is attached, and the fact that children are living under dire circumstances is all attached. And so what we have to do is as early intervention as we possibly can with the children. And that's even recognized by the Florida Chamber of Commerce as one of the best steps to take with children. We have to have more prevention and intervention programs that can really work with children zero to five and above, but zero to five in particular, to help them see that there are alternatives to intergenerational poverty and that there is a way for them, a trajectory away from the criminal system and into sort of uh, whatever they want the world to be, which I really think is what we all expect for our children. The Children's Services Council is a local tax, which is also something people really need to think about. It's not money that we bring in and then send out. It's money that will stay right here to provide the services. Um, they did a great job of putting that council together, looking at the, um, the needs in the community, uh, trying to make decisions as best they could about the priorities, because even though they can't decide it for at this point before the referendums even passed, they had some really good ideas. But I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly support it. Thank you. Carolyn Cummings, again, uh, your thoughts on the Children's Council proposal. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I support the Children Council proposal that will be on the ballot in November. Um, I went further and actually read the statute that allows Leon County to place it on the referendum. Um, and, and I looked at the other requirements as far as the studies that, that go into supporting it being on the ballot. And I also looked at uh, what the ultimate results would be and how that would affect our children here in Leon County. I feel good about the makeup. If it passes, I feel good about the makeup of the council, which would include our superintendent of schools, clearly, uh, include someone from the Department of Children and Families. It would include one of our local circuit judges, uh, someone from from the Leon County Commission and four individuals appointed by the governor as well, just to name a few. But I'm certain that those individuals would have our children at heart. They would be able to, uh, in my opinion, 
have some processes and procedures and rules to determine where those funds should go to best help our children. One of the things that impressed me about the legislation is that it does not allow supplantation. So whatever is being provided locally by our Leon County uh, School Board um, will continue to be provided. This will be a, a supplement and it will target, of course, um, they indicated three target areas, but one of the areas that I'm very concerned about and impressed about is uh, our children uh, going to school from first through third grade, which the studies indicate that by third grade, if you test the children and look at the statistics, you can pretty much determine uh, the success or achievement that child will enjoy in life. So I believe giving our children an early start uh, is a benefit. It's just a, it's an investment in our children. And even though it requires um, levying some taxes, if it passes, I believe that tax is a good investment in our children and it will go a long ways in making sure that they are successful in life. Thank you. Hey. We, we wind up our uh, Children's Council analysis with Melissa Villar. What do you think? Okay, I, I'd like to say why I do or I do support the, the Children's Services Council. Um, you know, the, the because again, you know, you're going to, to tax the Leon County residents and um, the Children's Services Council will then dole out the, the funds to the nonprofits. Um, and this will enable additional nonprofits to grow that are focused not only on the, the current, um, you know, the current list of nonprofits that we have here locally, but also on, you know, growing um, for um, individuals that not don't necessarily want to be connected to faith-based organizations or to, um, it's an opportunity to grow for family planning, for, for, um, you know, child learning for um, LGBTQ, um, for, you know, this is an opportunity to, uh, to really, in, instead of the current, because some of the opponents have said, why don't we umbrella under the community-based care? Well, the community-based care funding is, is, is based on the fact that you enter the Department of Children and Families or Services or the DJJ services. And that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid our families having to go through the court system and having issues. So we want to impact, positively impact our families early. You know, and this is, this is what needs to be stressed about the Children's Services Council. Even though there are only a few um, counties in, you know, less than, less than 10 um, in the entire state, this is what needs to be focused on is the fact that it's an opportunity to grow our nonprofits, to, to, to grow the diversification of the nonprofits, um, to impact our children early. Um, so families are not having to go through um, the community-based care organizations and be negatively impacted by the court system. So this is something that we're, it's, it's, it's um, you know, to positively impact families early and to, to offer opportunities for nonprofits to grow um, and diversify here in Leon County. Thank you. We only have a few more minutes left, folks, but one thing I wanted to address because I have seen so much activity relative to this topic on social media, particularly over the past 72 hours. People remarking that in all of their life in our area, they have never seen the tone of civil or civic discourse fall to the level that it is right now. And I, I don't want to name check anyone here unless any of you want to bring it up. But as a Leon County Commissioner, what do you think you could do personally to maybe turn this situation around where we have people of disparate political or other views actually being able to maybe speak to each other once again without shrieking or throwing things. Um, Melissa, as long as we're in your neighborhood, what do you do? How do you turn that around? Well, I think it's very important um, to understand. So, so some of my colleagues that I work with um, are from the Caribbean and in the hemp world. 
um, and they've never experienced um, systemic racism un until um, they moved here. Um, and, you know, and, and, you know, being called names, um, racial slurs, um, as my children had to, had to endure, um, unfortunately, um, all, all the way through high school. Um, it's, um, I, unfortunately, systemic racism exists. Um, unfortunately, we are in a, in a county, in a state, um, in a segre that was segregated, that had, um, you know, Jim Crow laws um, and uh, until civil rights movement. Um, so, but fortunately, we have leaders that are willing to work and come to the table and be together and to, um, and if that means that we need to, to protect First Amendment rights, um, to have an ordinance that allows for peacefully, pro, you know, peacefully assembles, um, peacefully assembling, then that's what we, what is necessary. Um, if we need to understand, I also want to explain too, one of the, you know, when you're, the law enforcement agencies are, are pulling funds federally and, you know, like, like um, the executive order that was put out, you know, the, Depart the Drug Enforcement Administration, um, because marijuana is being legalized across the nation, are pivoting their, their role. So the executive order by the White House would put out to survey you know, DEA now has surveillance over protesters um, authority. Um, and so these are, these are issues that are, are, are real, that, are, that are, are happening in our area. And what we want to do is come together and we want to be able to have and, and understand each other on all sides because, you know, the stand your ground laws um, are an issue. And I mean, this is why I, I focus on legalization as well, because when you legalize something, you take away the criminalization, deschedule, you, you, it decriminalizes. And if that means that, and I'm not in any way a, a, a gun rights advocate or a second amendment. However, if you encourage people to actually go through the process and become a, a, a concealed carry permit, then you take away that felony from them. Um, you know, th these are, these are real, these, this is about education. This, this is about you know, bringing people to the table and understanding your rights and responsibilities as a, as a, a resident, as a, a Leon County voter on all sides. You know, we have a responsibility to our community for public safety. Public safety is my number one concern, which is why Leon County is no, no longer has the highest crime rate in the state, because it, that's what has always been important to me. Because growing up in Texas, you have, you know, cartels were prevalent. And so, and, you know, they would use mules, our, our children as mules. So two pounds is a misdemeanor. Carrying two pounds of cannabis is a misdemeanor. So public safety has always been my number one concern. And the, the less we criminalize our, our community, the safer it will be. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kelly Adi, I, I saw your smile there. You've had some, uh, shall we say, firsthand experience here. How do you, how, how, do, how do we address this? So um, I think I found my line. So I uh, a few weeks ago said something on Facebook that got blown up as a headline on a website. And I had hundreds of people calling me names and yelling at me on certain Facebook sites. And I, that didn't bother me so much. Some of it was just stupid and silly and didn't make any sense, some of the arguments they were making. But they were arguing against something that I had said. So I think that was a good lesson in what happens when you're, when people are hearing what you have to say. But what happened this last week where somebody went online and posted um, about the appearances of um, one of the, one of my opponents and I, and which one of us was prettier and who should win. That was a line for me because that was just blatant sexism. That was something that I have definitely figured out is a line. I feel the same way about racism. I will tolerate people um, ha being angry, thinking that I'm not the right person for something or that I made the wrong decision and that they say it heatedly and passionately as long as I'm not being cursed at and screamed at, but I will not tolerate when people are, are, are literally um, 
hurting someone because of our gender or because of our race or sexual orientation or abilities. So I found my line. So I think in that sense, that was a really good thing. I was super pleased at the number of people that have spoken up against what was said. I was very disappointed that neither one of my opponents did, but I was very grateful for the people in the community. There have been hundreds of them that have spoken up against what was said. So I'm grateful for that. I think that there is something really wrong at a national level that has prompted all of us to believe that we can act with hostility and not civility towards each other. And I will do everything I can to model the way that it should be done, to be respectful, to see the good in people um, and still disagree with what they have to say. I, I think one of the things that I have been good at for 25 years is standing up for what I believe in a very strong and fierce way, but that, but by not painting people with a large brush that they no longer um, are good or, or honorable people in some other way. But I, I found my line thanks to the campaign and uh, I will work to model and promote civility. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Carolyn Cummings, your thoughts on this, please, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm trying to reset my stopwatch here, <laughs> so I won't go over. Okay, thank you for that question. Um, we have certainly witnessed here the last few months a heightened polarization within the country and right here in Leon County. Uh, the Black Lives Matter movement it's a peaceful movement of individuals who are protesting against social justice. And many of us have taken part in peaceful marches uh, in favor of equality for everyone. So I certainly um, advocate and applaud for citizens to be able to engage in peaceful protests. I do not support, I do not uh, advocate rioting activities. Uh, and I think for the most part, what we've seen is outside agitators coming into some of the peaceful uh, marches that we have observed across the country, and maybe even here uh, in Leon County. But I also believe in the First Amendment right of individuals to engage in peaceful protests against injustice. And I'm concerned that that ability to do that uh, might be adversely affected or uh, have a chilling effect on individuals expressing and exercising their uh, First Amendment right to assemble. I, I, I am also concerned, on the other hand, about law enforcement, enforcing laws. I'm concerned about maintaining peace, uh, maintaining har uh, harmony here in Leon County. And so as a Leon County Commissioner, looking at the polarization that we have, I believe citizens want to express themselves. One way of expression is peace for protest, but another way of expression is forums. Speaking, um, speaking, in a, in a forum with like-minded individuals, meaning interested individuals, with law enforcement, with community leaders, with the faith-based community, with everybody that has a stake in the outcome of Leon County being a peaceful place to live and grow should be at the table. And I agree with you, we, we are hurting, we are suffering, and we don't want more polarization. We do not need more division in Leon County. So we need to come together and address the issue. And I just firmly believe uh, people want to voice their opinion. People want to be heard. And at the end of the day, if people are heard and their opinions are voiced, I believe that we can move forward with some positive, concrete action so that we can 
in this divide, whether it's racial divide, community divide. Um, a recent survey showed that the majority of people in Leon County, black and white across um, socioeconomic lines, believe that there is inequity here in Leon County. So we at a pivotal point where we can address it. We do not need to allow this moment to escape us. We are in a defining moment. And as a Leon County commissioner, I would advocate for us to please come together and let's breathe and let's enjoy peace and harmony by talking to each other, not at each other. Thank you. Final question, lightning round, 30 seconds. Carolyn Cummings, you get elected. You sit at your desk up there on the fifth floor of the courthouse. What is the first thing that you will do? Go. The first thing that I will do is I will incorporate one day a week to speak to citizens. I want to hear from the citizens. As county commissioner, we represent the citizens. And I've got to know the citizens' insight. So one day a week, my administrative assistant will set aside time for me to talk to individuals. If we're still enduring the pandemic, we will do it virtually. But I will talk to everybody. It doesn't matter what zip code you're from. I want to be accessible to the citizen. Thank you. Kelly Adi, same question. Go. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is hold the first of the listening sessions that I'll be doing quarterly. I'm going to hold one listening session in every one of the six districts every quarter. So I want to do that right away and get a list of um, priorities from each district citizens. Thank you very much. And you get the last word, Melissa Villar. Um, yes. Um, in order to um, we need to have forums, we need to have discussions because we need to set our legislative and local priorities. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I um, it's not only about our natural resources and our responsible and sustainable develop, growth management and development, but it's also about, um, like for instance, our, our health insurance premiums. When I worked at the legislature, I brought it to the attention of, of my staff saying, um, why, why aren't we pushing for fixed rates on our health insurance premiums? Because then it would blow up like the airline industry and it would be just a mess. And it did. Um, so uh, our, our priorities, the meeting forums for our priorities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melissa Villar. Kelly Audi and Carolyn Cummings, the three contenders for Leon County Board of County Commissioners, the at-large seat one. Good luck to you all. Thank you for being on Political Perspectives. And we'll probably be talking to you election night. Thanks for being yeah. a part of it. Um, thank, thank you. you. Enjoy it. Perspectives produced by WFSU Public Media in Tallahassee, Taylor Cox, Paul Dam, Amy Diaz de Villegas, Tricia Moynihan, and Lydell Rawls, along with our Director of Content, Kim Kelly, putting all of this together. We thank you so much. I'm Tom Flanagan. Our next Political Perspectives on Tuesday, September 29th, will focus on the Leon County Commission District 4 contest. We invite you to join us then for another Political Perspectives from WFSU Public Media. Take care.